Hey guys, let's talk about becoming a subcontractor as a freelancer. Now, of course, because this channel is about web development and development in general, it's going to be focused on that. But these rules that I'm about to lay out for you or these lessons apply to any type of subcontracting that you may do in the freelance space. So whether you're a photographer or videographer, a software developer, a WordPress expert, whatever, these rules apply. So uh, here's the scenario. You got a situation where you know a independent contractor or freelancer who has a job and they want to hire you to work on an aspect of the job. So perhaps they're back end developers and you're a UX UI person and they want you to work on the UX UI for this contract. So question that was put to me in that scenario, uh, should the subcontractor, if you're the UI UX expert, who's been uh, hired by or asked by some other freelancer to work on this collaborate, 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 to work together on this project together, shouldn't you have access as a subcontractor to that client? Shouldn't you be dealing directly with that client? And the short answer is no. The owner of the client, the person who brings in the client, basically owns that client, if you will. And uh, some, uh, subcontractors, some people may be going, well, no, since I'm doing the work, shouldn't I have direct contact with the, uh, the client? Again, no, it's uh, etiquette that you don't, it's good etiquette rather, that you do not contact uh, or try and run, and run around the subcontractor you are working with. I've done this kind of work in the past. Even in, like, for example, the wedding photography game, it's not uncommon for a wedding, wedding photography person A will hire another wedding photographer to help with a big wedding. The other wedding photographer, it's kind of known, they do not interact with the uh, client. They just deal with the wedding photographer who got the client. Same thing in development as well. For you to try to contact the client directly and deal with them directly is bad etiquette, shouldn't do it. And actually, to me, it's advantageous to not do it. So what do I mean by that? When you are subcontracted, meaning when some other contractor, some other web developer hires you to work on a particular project, that subcontractor is responsible for you getting paid. So if they don't get paid by the client for some reason, you still should get paid. And that's their responsibility as the owner of that client. So uh, there you have it. Now, there are exceptions, of course. There may be situations where you will be asked to partner on a project and they will say, I want you to be directly involved with the client because there's, there's some complexity there. So I'll give you a little story. The very last gig I did as a contractor, this is a long time ago, before uh, my SaaS businesses started to work and so I didn't do any more uh, contract work. But the very last gig I did for a friend who was a front end developer, well, front end designer, and to get the job, they needed to have all this complex back end stuff built. So I was basically out of the game at this point, And he said to me, Steph, please, please help me do this contract. I can't find anybody do this contract. I, I we got to do all this back end stuff. I won't get the contract unless you do the backhand stuff. So I, as a favor, I said, okay, I'll help you. I'll do the backhand stuff, even though I was kind of I was out of that game at that point in time. Anyway, in that situation, because there was a lot of complexity involved uh, and the, the guy who owned the client, the guy who got the client, didn't know anything about the intricacies of uh, backhand Java development, I had to, out of necessity, deal directly with the... Uh, with the client. And because, uh, because of that situation, the arrangement was that uh, I would, I would bill them directly and he would bill the client directly and it was separated that way. Again, that was a situation that everybody agreed upon and it made sense in that situation. On the other hand, you know, depending on uh, whoever got the contract, whoever owns the client, if you will, they may decide it's easier for them to just pay you. Again, in closing, is it etiquette for you to to not necessarily have direct contact with the client if you are subcontracting? 100% 
People do it all the time. I'll give you a, a very broad analogy, Apple. Apple doesn't make their screens for their iPhone. Samsung does, last time I heard. Uh, Apple doesn't assemble their iPhones. Uh, Foxconn does. Uh, does that mean that Foxconn owns a part? Is, are, you a con, are you a client of Foxconn? No, you're a client of Apple. Foxconn supplies Apple with a, uh, a service and a product. And if you are working for some other contractor and you're doing some aspect of a job that they have, you are a client, uh, you are working for them, not for the end client. Same thing. Uh, it's common in industry to do subcontracting work. And in my opinion, even though the instinct is that you want direct contact with the client, in my opinion, it's cleaner and easier to not have that direct contact unless contact, unless it's absolutely necessary. All right, there you go. My phone rang. I got to hit the gym. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.